All right, my friends, it is time for another tier list. This time we're returning to the topic of cover songs, not cover bands, cover songs. Although I wish that there were more like metal cover bands. Like, you know, there's these bands that they're called like, I don't know, The Journey or something like that. And it's a Journey cover band. They get paid like $2,000 a night to play Journey covers to drunk people. Meanwhile, your favorite metal band uh, probably gets half that when they're on tour. It's the, the cruel, sad reality of life. So maybe we need more metal cover bands. Maybe we just need like a hate breed cover band called like hate breeders or something like that, or called satisfaction is the death of desire. And they play hate breed cover songs. Anyway, what we are here to do today is to rank the very best and the very worst rock and metal cover songs. That's what we're here to do. We will be sorting them as usual from S tier to F tier. And, you know, I just took out the D and E tiers because do we really need those? I mean, really, if you're going to put something on the D tier or the E tier, you might as well just put it on the F tier, right? So we're just going to keep things simple. S, A, B, C, and F. And, of course, it wouldn't be a tier list if we didn't start with uh, with the king of covers. Your man, Machine Gun Kelly, covering uh, Misery Business with Travis Barker. I actually have not listened to this one, so I'm going into this one blind. Obviously, his cover of System of a Down, say, was, you know, not the best. Let's just put it that way. However, hard to go wrong with Travis Barker. They're in the studio. Let's see if the Paramore cover stacks up. Let's see. I haven't listened to it yet. I really haven't. Let's see. I mean, this part sounds fine. This sounds good, although uh, this is probably, yeah, this is from 2020. I was going to say, you can tell that this is a COVID video because just like every other COVID video, it's everyone recording themselves in their home studio because if we were to stand in the same room as someone else in our band, we would definitely drop dead of COVID. So uh, definitely you can tell that this is from 2020. I'm in the business of misery. Let's take it from the top. She's got a body like an hourglass. It's ticking like a clock. Oh, God. Why is Travis wearing this shirt? Pussy builds strong bones. Why would you? I feel like this is. Do you guys remember that really awful um, I Declare War shirt? You guys remember this one? <laughs> yeah, or like the FBI female body inspector shirt. Exactly. Travis, what are you doing here? Why do we need the pussy builds strong bones shirt? Why do we need to do that? It's like your edgy uncle shows up to the family reunion wearing that. You know, it's like your your mom's brother shows up wearing that and your mom's like, God damn it, Donald. I told you. Oh, you're working my last nerve, Donald. Did you bring the mustard like I asked? He's like, oh, well, no, I just, the store was closed. I Never mind. I'll go get it myself. I waited eight long months and finally set her free. I told her I couldn't. Yeah, the uncle who wants you to get him stoned. To be fair, this is like so out of his range. I don't know why he would choose to sing that to, to even try to cover this. You know what I mean? It's like he has a very deep voice. Trying to cover uh, Haley Williams probably was not a wise choice in my opinion so my advice for mgk is um i would steer clear of the covers that's what i think i would steer clear of the covers as a vocalist you know it's the, not his strength let's put it that way not not his strength but uh, you know an a for effort an a for effort but where does it belong on the tier list I'm not actually going to give it an a for effort i'm going to give it a c for effort i have heard worse it's not good but you know, it's not an F. It's better than his system of a down cover, right? It's better than that. So I give it a C. That's what I think. I'm feeling generous today. Next, we have Avenged Sevenfold covering Walk by Pantera. Now, this is a tough one because Pantera is kind of one of these bands like Slayer, where it's like you're really setting yourself up for failure here because... There's no way that you're going to cover a Pantera song and come anywhere close to being as good as Pantera, right? Like the best you could do is like kind of an okay version of Pantera, unless you take it in a completely other different direction, you know, like if you did a death metal version of the song or a pop punk version or something like that. This one's a pretty straightforward cover. It does sound good. It sounds really good. Can you see I'm easily a father by my sister? 
I mean, it sounds pretty good. I haven't listened to this in a long time. They got the guitar tone nailed. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. The problem, like I said, is, you know, if you're going to do a straight cover of a band like Pantera, there's just, there's no way. Nobody can do Pantera anywhere near as well as Pantera did Pantera, right? Uh, it's definitely not bad. Um, but I have listened to that song so many fucking times that I know every word of that. I know every tone. I know every single goddamn note on that album. I think it's very good, but it's just sort of the same problem as a thrash band doing a cover of Angel of Death. It's like, well, there's no way that you're going to do Angel of Death and sound as good as Slayer. So, you know, I put it on the B tier. That's what I think. Uh, and you guys know I love Avenged Sevenfold dearly. It's just kind of, they did the best they could covering one of the absolute best metal bands of all time. You know, um, what can you do? I feel like a B is kind of the best grade you can expect for that song. So respect, but it's still a B for me. Next, we have an underrated song and an underrated band. You guys know this band Orgy. This is from back in 1999, I think, covering Blue Monday by New Order. I think a lot of people probably don't even know this is a cover. I think it's way better than the original. I think this song is great. Not ironically great. And not ironically better than the original, which I know is probably heresy to say to post-punk people. Once again, I'm just, uh, I'm insanely jealous of everything about these guys. How are they all like six foot four, like giga Chad new metal dudes with like cool Final Fantasy hair? Just, ugh. It makes me angry that these guys exist. Imagine how much fucking puss they got back in the day from all those like Hollywood new metal thoughts. They ran through every single one of them. I guarantee it. How does it feel? I don't know about the, uh, the mic technique. I used to think this band was Swedish or something. Uh, I'll tell you why you thought they were Swedish is because, I mean, look at that guy. I would, I would. Listen, you thought the same thing as I did. When you saw this guy, you were like, oh, damn, who is she? And they're like, wait a minute. No, <laughs> no, that's not what I thought. I'll tell you why you thought that is because they're all like freakishly good looking and six foot four. That's why you thought they were Swedish. See, it looks like a goddamn blow up doll. I think this song is great. I legitimately, not ironically, think this is a great cover. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed here. Is he... Okay. Is he stroking her foot? He Okay. Good. Okay. I was going to say at first, at first I thought he was stroking her hand and I was like, this guy had perfectly good access to her foot and he chose to stroke her hand. But now I see he is, he did indeed go for the foot and I say, respect, fist bump, fist bump, a man of culture going right for the foot. And you can see her looking at him, admiring him. She's like, Ooh, he knew exactly what he wanted. He saw the foot and he took it. That's a man of action. That's the kind of guy I'm looking for. Guy who knows what he wants and takes it. So where would I put this song? I'll tell you what, to me, one of the things that makes a cover S tier is if there's like millions of people that don't even realize it's a cover, they're like, oh, I love that song. And they don't even realize it's a cover. To me, that's what makes it an S tier cover. So that's where I put it. It's on the S tier. I like it. Orgy, legitimately, non-ironically, a very underrated band. They have two albums from back in the day. Both are excellent. Next, we have the song that put your boys in Limp Biscuit on the map, Faith, originally by George Michael, off the first Limp Biscuit album, right? $3 bill, y'all. Oh, I guess it would be nice if I could touch your body. I I've never, ever, ever in my life wanted to hear Fred Durst look me in the eye and say, I guess it would be nice if I could touch your body. That's an event that I never, ever, ever wanted to say that I experienced. But here we are. We experienced it together. Am I old? I can remember hearing this on the radio in high school. Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, that's true. Before the red hat. Wow. Very early, rare Fred Durst aesthetic before the red hat. I know not everybody has got a body. Oh, God. I wonder who she is. Someone fire up the Reddit detective machine. Find who the girl is that got her booby signed by Fred Durst in 1995. Class act right here with the cigarette, lit cigarette in her hand, showing off 
the Fred Durst autograph on her boob. That's a class act right here. How many times has she been married since then? How many like children did she have out of wedlock? How many times have you seen her outside of 7-Eleven in Cookie Monster pajamas yelling and screaming and arguing, like throwing shit at her boyfriend at like 4 a.m. next to their like uh, Toyota Corolla with three hubcaps um, parked outside the vape shop? That's her. <laughs> Our Y2K queen. He's got a body like me. Here it comes. Sounds like a local band, doesn't it? I know everybody stands Wes Borland. Uh, and he seems like a cool guy. He was certainly very talented. But, uh, you know, the fact that he chose to deploy his talents to Limp Biscuit doesn't that kind of... Um, isn't that a bit of a red flag? Doesn't that diminish his legacy a bit? You know, doesn't it? Imagine if Michelangelo used his painting talents, you know, to do those. You remember when Glenn Danzig had those like erotic comics? Imagine if Michelangelo used his talents to make sexy comic books for Glenn Danzig. You know, that's Wes Borland choosing to use his talents for Limp Biscuit. I think it diminishes his legacy a bit. That's what I think. Anyway, the cover of Faith by Limp Biscuit, uh, perhaps heresy, but I'm going to say it's not good. I'm going to say it's like borderline bad. That's what I think. Where does it rank? You guys are going to hate me for this because I know everybody loves new metal. You guys are going to hate me for this, but I, I got to call it like I see it. I call balls and strikes. Okay, people. I just call it like I see it. I'm an unbiased umpire. I think this goes on the same tier as uh, MGK covering Paramore. I know there may be some hurt butts by that. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but that's what I think. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Next, how about Cinnamon Girl by Typo Negative, which uh, I didn't know that this was a cover for many years. When I heard this when I was a kid, I didn't know. Apparently, it's originally by Neil Young. I didn't know that. And I think this might have been the first popular song that they had, I think. It definitely sounds like a typo negative song. They did a good job of making it their own. He is a handsome man, it's true. Is, is this Sleep Token? <laughs> yeah, wow, Sleep Token's sounding good these days. I think this is pretty good. As I said before, to me, the hallmark of a good cover is, could you have heard this song for years without knowing that it was a cover? Because I like it when a band makes it their own, you know, as opposed to just like trying to duplicate the original. To me, that's not very interesting. I like it when a band kind of does something different with it. I think it's good. I like it. I am a typo negative fan also. I feel like their their fan base gets a little bit stanish. I don't stand typo negative, but I do think they're good. Where would I put this song? Let's see. I think I'm gonna put this on the A tier. I think it's a little bit better than Avenged Sevenfold doing Walk because Walk is a better song. But as a cover, I think this one is better because Typo Negative did a little bit more with it and made it their own a little bit more. So that's that's what I would think. I think it belongs on the A tier. Again, love Avenged Sevenfold, nothing but respect, but they set themselves up for something tough by trying to cover Pantera. It's tough. How can you really do a good job of covering Pantera? You know what I mean? We got to have something to fill out the F tier, right? <laughs> And uh, nothing says F tier like Six Feet Under. Have you guys heard this? This is uh, originally by ACDC. Shockingly bad. Truly shockingly bad. And believe it or not, this is better than the studio version. So if you think this is bad, go check out the studio version and it's even worse. Somehow even worse. The guitar tone. The guitar tone sounds like... Uh, when you're in seventh grade and you get a crate combo amp and you have no idea how to even dial in a tone at all. So you just turn everything up, turn the gain up all the way and start playing, you know, fucking Nirvana riffs. That's what that guitar tone sounds like. Yeah, line six pod straight to your tape deck. Exactly. Talent show type beat. Yes. I do know what you mean. This is worse than a talent show. This would be like the seventh graders at the talent show. Not even the ninth graders. Seventh grade talent show. Yeah, 
The studio version is even worse than this. I wanted to do Chris a favor. And he's so stoked on this too. Look at that. He's so excited about this performance. Look at the look on his face. He's like, hell yeah, we rocked this motherfucker. We're rocking this fucking stage. Look how confident he is here right here. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, we got, uh huh, yeah. Oh yeah, you're feeling it, aren't you? You're feeling it. So, I mean, everything about Six Feet Under basically is uh, F tier, right? And uh, even by the incredibly low standards of Six Feet Under, that song is horrible. Even worse than their other horrible songs. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an easy one, right? Solid F tier makes MGK look great by comparison. And by the way, they have a whole album of these covers. A whole album of like, basically like classic rock covers. Um, I think it's called Graveyard Classics. So if you want to uh, inflict even more pain upon yourself, if you're a masochist, um, go ahead and look up the rest of it. Oh, they have two albums. Wow. They have two albums of covers. Wow. What kind of ransom do they have on Metal Blade that Metal Blade allowed them to put out two albums of these incredibly bad covers. I can't imagine anyone who's buying those. I'm going to meet the person whose favorite album is the Six Feet Under covers album. Th that person's out there somewhere. That person exists. If you're like, hey man, uh, I'm just curious, like if you could only listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? You'd be like, uh... Man, it's a toss-up between Graveyard Classics number one and number two by Six Feet Under. I don't know. I just, I can't pick. It's a, it's a coin flip. They're both just so great. How am I supposed to pick one? Okay, uh, another classic is Last Caress by Metallica, originally by Misfits, which was on their Garage Days Revisited EP back in 87 or whatever it was. This is a live version. But it's still pretty good. I think it's great. I think it's a great cover. Um, the thing with um, a lot of a lot of times when a metal band covers a punk band, it comes out like kind of stiff and crappy, you know, because lots of times the the metal guys like play too precisely for punk but you know metallica they were never like virtuosos and you know the fact that like lars is kind of a shitty drummer i actually think really makes this work i think it sounds great thrash is from punk well I, i'm not writing the history of thrasher i'm just telling you that lots of times when metal bands cover punk songs uh not good but in this case i think it's awesome lots and lots and lots of people discovered misfits uh through metallica and i would say that you know, this is one of the uh, one of the better covers of all time, I think. So good, in fact, that I am willing to put it right up here on the S tier. I feel like this is the only time in history that Orgy has been put on the same tier as Metallica. <laughs> I like this. Imagine this was a festival. Wouldn't this be like the most amazing festival lineup of all time? You could go see this in like some weird place like Portugal or whatever you can imagine this like orgy metallica avenge sevenfold mgk and limp biscuit with six feet under like this is a plausible festival lineup in 2023 that's the best part <laughs> anyway s tier i think now we've seen a terrible 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 cover of chop suey by uh system of a down and you might think well that's just because system of a down is so great that nobody could possibly do justice to it well I think this August Burns Red cover of Chop Suey, actually pretty great. I think this is pretty damn good. Yeah, in Portugal, two and a half million people there, exactly. I think this is pretty damn good, especially the drumming. Matt from uh, August Burns Red, one of the best drummers in metal, and he sounds great on this. That's right, this cover of Lil Uzi Bird. I think this sounds great. And you guys know I'm a certified system of a down disliker. The greatest posture in metal true. Matt sits up very straight when he plays. It's true. I like this better than the original, personally, because it sounds a little bit more hardcore. Great production, too. The drums are so good, they sound programmed. That's just Matt Grainer, man. He's that fucking good. Matt's a fucking machine. Powered by the fury of Christ. The drums just sound so damn good. Now, with that said, I don't think we can put it on the uh, on the S tier because, you know, it really is a fairly straightforward cover. 
You know, I don't think they like made it their own, but they did a pretty damn good job with, uh, you know, with, with what it is. I think they did it about as well as you could for what it is. So I'm going to put it on the A tier, I think. You know, this is like somewhere in between, you know, a band like Orgy really just kind of makes it their own song. Avenged Sevenfold kind of didn't really change it enough. I feel like, you know, with August Burns Red, kind of just right there. Sounds great. You know, not going to set the world on fire, but a damn good cover. So I'm going to put it on the A tier. That's what I think. Lastly, of course, we have to talk about some new metal because uh, how could I possibly make a video without talking about new metal? Lastly, we have Spit by Poppy, originally by the girls in Kitty. Now, the first time I heard this, I was like, wait a minute, this sounds so new metal. What is this? It's like, when did she go new metal? This sounds so familiar. Cool video, too. It sounds absolutely nothing like the original. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I feel like this is what the original was supposed to sound like you know what i mean because the original it's a little rough around the edges you know it's from 99 like it's a little rough around the edges i feel like this is what it was supposed to sound like in my opinion i think it sounds great love that snare too got that original old school new metal snare yeah it's way better than the original Good example of somebody bringing out a song like that song was fine. You know, the original is like, it's a perfectly good new metal song, but it takes someone like Poppy to kind of modernize it and update it. And in my opinion, bring out the potential in the song that was kind of hidden in it all along. I think it's great. Kept the, you know, jungly kind of parts in there, which I always thought were cool. I think this is really good. It also helps that Poppy is significantly more talented than Kitty ever was. Well, I don't know that that's fair. I mean, it was a different time. You know, those girls in Kitty, they've turned into a very good band. I think they were just like a very young band. And, you know, it's not really fair to compare people from like the late 90s, you know, who were like basically a new band to someone like Poppy that's making music for 10 years in like the modern era. I don't think that's fair. Uh, so respect to Kitty, um, but also respect to Poppy. I think that this song is excellent. I'm going to put it on the B tier. It's a very good cover, but I don't think the original song is good enough to like make it great. So I think Poppy did the best version of it that you could possibly do, but I don't think that the, the original song has enough potential in it to go higher than the B tier. That's what I think. Um, but some good selections today. Hopefully you enjoyed this as much as I did. Join us next time for episode number three of the cover song tier list, where we will look at the very best and of course, the very worst cover songs. But man of culture going right for the foot.